What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you so much for tuning in. It's me, Mikey Pipes, heading to my next service call. We have an existing residential client. Got a Lars Mighty Therm 2 gas-fired hydronic boiler. It's a regular 85% efficient system, but it's two-stage on the gas valve. We're going to do some uh, repairs to an expansion tank that's, let's just say, not kosher. You'll see in a minute what I'm talking about. And I think, I really do believe that you're going to appreciate the way I transform how it's going to be re-roughed. Let's go! <laughs> that U.S. boiler said, yeah, but contractors are going to be like worried you're going to steal their, their guys. I was like, <laughs> that thought never even entered my mind. 100%, I swear. Like, but I'm good. I'm good. I don't, uh, if I need someone, I'll put it out there. And right now, you know what? I got, I, I can use a floater, but it's all good. I can really use Peter in the field and part time and answering, doing some service calls. And then what have you, we can figure out having a CR, uh, customer service rep, CSR in the office, but whatever it is, what it is. Good stuff. All right, I'm back at this Lars Mini Therm. I gotta try to properly install that extra expansion tank. I gotta clean up this mess, including putting the drip light on the relief valve. Oh man, where do we begin? I am actually contemplating coming across with some, mm, how am I gonna do this? There's our water supply. This is just a disaster. <laughs> this is a disaster. Here's our domestic incoming water. Let's close that off. Let's isolate our zones. Zones are all isolated. Let's remove some pressure from the boiler. I got these brushes with my Milwaukee drill. I'm gonna try to clean up that T there, but may have to replace it. I'm just scared of that nipple. I'm scared of that nipple. So let's hook up our hose to our drain. Powers off to the boiler. And you may be asking Mikey Pipes, what's up all the dirt everywhere? Well, there's construction going upstairs. They're demoing a bathroom. So everything has dirt on it. <clears throat> okay, hopefully that's good. Put that there, let's open this up. Nothing comes out of it because it's airbound. Let's pop open that. And there we go. <sighs> Let me show you something that you guys will uh, probably want to <laughs> want to tell me to go home. Ready? Tectanium by uh, DHT. This is an indirect fired water heater. An indirect, fire, an indirect fired water heater is a tank that is heated with boiler water to provide domestic hot water. See that pipe right there? See that? Goes that away. It goes here. Here, see it's connected to the boiler. Uh huh. Don't 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 comment yet. You see that pipe right there? It goes up across to the top there and it goes to here and this pipe is cold this is our domestic cold water see how it continues boiler feed valve okay wait for it you see this pipe right here it goes across here 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 see the circulator this is the circulator for that tank 
So instead of heating a room or a zone with air with a thermostat, we have an aquastat. And you see this pipe here? This is domestic hot water outlet. Now, pop quiz, ladies and gentlemen. One, two, three, four. Four pipes, right? Two for domestic water, incoming, outgoing. Two for space heating water, hydronic water, incoming, outgoing. Supply, return, domestic cold, domestic hot. I'll let you sit on this for a minute. What's missing? I'll let you, I'll just focus right there. Tell me what's missing. And in case you guys want to see the full angle, there you go. What's missing? Tell me. Thoughts and feedback in the comment section down below. All right, using those metal brushes, I confirm that we have just a lot of superficial corrosion on the uh, black tee, the nipple as well. It's pretty solid. Uh, I'm gonna change this nipple and of course the relief valve. I still haven't figured out how I'm gonna do this, but ideally if I could orientate the tank in a vertical position and facing downward, that would be preferred and ideal, but I'd also have to reconfigure the piping here. Ideally, if I can go across here with a uh, piece of half inch black pipe to right here, put a T here, come across and hang a tank right here. It's still kind of like in the way of the gas control valve. And then I have to come up and then connect to our pressure reducing valve. And again, I, this is not in the budget, so I may just have to clean that up as best I can and somehow maybe put a piece of threaded rod there from the floor. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I really don't, but we'll figure it out. <sighs> okay, let me try to pop out this leaf valve and change the nipple. It's been leaking forever. That has been leaking forever. Try to take this nipple out. There's really like no room here. It's crazy. Let's see. <sighs> of course. <sighs> well, I'm holding back with my hand. And... That is just a, uh... <sighs> man, I really don't want to start playing with all this. I do not feel like being a magician today. <sighs> well, F it. It is what it is. I don't even know why I'm bothering. Oh, God. Jesus Christ. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Why am I even bothering? too well my favorite right now. <laughs> nope. It's not. <laughs> I'm just keeping it real. The pen trick did not work as anticipated. 
Sure didn't. <laughs> At least it's on the right direction. Okay. Um, I am going to come up with a coupling, a six inch nipple, maybe another coupling. And I'm going to try to reorganize a tank and maybe I could put it somewhere here. I don't know. We'll figure something out. The tank is gone. I'll give you guys a sneak peek in a second. I'm going to cut back this piece of band iron, which is technically not permitted for the use of hanging and strapping and supporting pipes in the state of New York. Um, that's closed. Yeah, watch and see what I do. Watch and see what I do. There's a hint. There's another hint. All right, I'll just show you guys. <laughs> Come on. How'd you think I was going to leave it? And yes, I know that should be copper, but I'm going to put a black nipple on there with a uh, copper male adapter, create my drip light to the floor. And I'm going to take my grinder and cut this. That's what I'm going to do right now. And I'm gonna thread on that pressure reducing valve to right there. <laughs> Not too shabby, huh? I gotta get a drip leg on there. was here. <laughs> wow. I wish I could have had it vertical in a downward position so you can read this without it turning your head like that, you know, but um, I like, I like, and I've only been here for about, about 57 minutes. So I got the relief valve replaced from the new coupling from top of the riser, the nipple coming out of the boiler. I gotta put a 90 on there. Not too shabby. All right, um, <laughs> I've been here for another hour and a half. I totally overlooked something. No air removal anywhere in the system, anywhere here. The only one that I can remotely find is this one right there on top of the fan coil inside the air handler for the first floor forced air zone. Now, some of you may be asking, why is there a circulator there and a circulator there, a circulator there, a circulator there, and a circulator there? You would think that this has, uh, that's dumb. Well, you're wrong. This circulator leaving the boiler on the supply piping, follow this pipe comes up, across, passing all these T's, and making its way there. See that? All the way around, it makes its way there. This is the primary loop circulator. Pretty nifty, huh? You can actually do this on any boiler. Have uh, the pipe leaving, have a circulator there, and then you do your closely spaced T's, at least you should. You know, you have your supply return, supply return, supply return. You can do it that way or have all your supplies on one side and then all your returns on the other. Just increases water volume here, um, but also allows the boiler not to be shocked at low temperature. Low return temperature will cause the boiler to condensate. 
upon itself, and that condensate is acidic, and it'll start deteriorating the cast iron coil, cast iron, sorry, heat exchanger inside the uh, the boiler. Um, this is, I guess, hot. I'd like to be hotter. Yeah, let's see how it is by the indirect. This is our. That's cold. Make its way back to the boiler. No. Oh. That's domestic cold, domestic hot. Space heating from boiler out to boiler. I would like this to be hotter. Just not. My zone is calling. <sighs> At least that one's getting hot now. But this one's not doing bupkis. Not a, not a effing thing. Let's purge. This indirect is this one there. So I'm gonna take my hose that I've been using to purge into a bucket. I'm gonna bring that up here. Try to do this one handily, just not working out. To a bucket. Let's close that valve. It's open. Increase pressure. Let's open that up more. Watch my hose. Give me any more air out of it. My supply is getting hot. It's cooling off now because I'm dumping tons of cold water into it. I'm not seeing any air pockets. Close our flask fill, close our drain, open up our isolation valve that was preventing water from going back to the boiler. Okay, now hopefully, hopefully we're good. Temperature cooled off drastically. This is getting hot again, I feel it. Hopefully that one gets hot as well. There's no air here, there's no means to remove air, so. This is like a losing battle. <sighs> Idiots who stole this. Idiots. Not too shabby, huh? If you live in the Long Island, New York City metropolitan area, and you're tired of getting bamboozled by your HVAC contractor, I want you to pick up the phone and give me a call at 516-348-6300. You can also save time. Book online at pipedoc.net. And remember, if you like any of these cool stickers, like those, email me, mike at mikeypipes.com. Catch you in the next one. Be well, God bless, stay safe.